everyone and welcome back. All right, so we've been talking a lot about Activision Blizzard. However, while that's been going on, Ubisoft has had a massive ongoing mess, most recently involving Ubisoft Singapore, which of course is the Skull and Bones studio. If you remember our video about Skull and Bones and the big Kotaku article, uh, yeah, utter chaos and shit show. And now this whole thing has caught the attention of Singapore themselves. So let's get into this, right? Let's talk about what's actually happening. So Ubisoft Singapore's office is being investigated by a national watchdog over claims of sexual harassment and workplace discrimination. The Tripartite Alliance for Fair and Progressive Employment Practices, TAFEP, uh, got an anonymous, uh, got an, an on-feedback on July 23rd that linked them to media articles containing information and harassment. So basically, that Kotaku report and a few other things those were basically linked to this agency. The agency read, seemingly had a bit of an oh shit moment and uh, urged anybody with knowledge of criminal conduct to immediately report it to the police. So this is fairly major. Now, when TAFEP investigate harassment cases in Singapore, employees may be required to carry out their own investigations, or employers even, um, via interviews with relevant affected parties and witnesses, as well as reviewing documentary evidence and implementing new procedures to prevent future uh, recurrences. Now, the regulation at play here is the Ministry of Manpower's Fair Consideration Framework, which basically just says you know, discriminating along the lines of, uh, you know, protected characteristics like age, gender, race, religion, and language are not a thing to be doing. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing that really would hurt Ubisoft, right? Because I know I've just talked about a bunch of government agencies and legislations and ministries. Here's the bit. If Ubisoft are found to be in breach of this framework, the MOM could bar them from applying for any new work passes for foreign staff or renewing existing ones for between one and two years. Now, I forget the name of the visa because, funny enough, I'm not in America, but the, uh, the is it something, at, whatever, the visa that allows for foreign workers in, like, the tech industry in California, where the tech industry seemingly relies pretty heavily on that, and also sometimes doesn't treat those people super well because they end up being a bit trapped there in their visa. But that's like a major source of getting staff for these companies. So to have your studio that's working on Skull and Bones, what you want to be your big new franchise, suddenly be starved for manpower like this, that's awful. And I will bring this in. Um, I have to be careful not to be identifying to the person. I really do need to reply to their email again. But uh, there was somebody who, let's just say, was... I was shocked how high up this person was at this studio, um, who actually said, like, yeah, they just gave us some information. And uh, certainly an interesting situation of that being one of those studios where, over time, the team doesn't get more senior. The team gets more junior. So imagine that is happening because of the attrition rate, but then, because of your know, rules from this ministry, you're barred from getting foreign staff? I mean, I'm sure the Singaporean talent pool is great, but you absolutely want to be able to hire from uh, you know, everywhere that's possible. So this would be severe for the studio and I think for Ubisoft overall. Now, the police uh, will investigate any criminal offenses tied to misconduct where offenders can be fined or jailed and uh, they can also be caned. I had a double take whenever I, I was going over our research document earlier. And then I remember a lot of people said that, oh yeah, they can get real hardcore about shit in Singapore if they want to. So yeah, a caning. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Um, there also could be legal recourse under the Protection from Harassment Act. This uh, could be a civil suit involving damages and a protection order or a criminal one with a police investigation. This is all great for Ubisoft, right? Ubisoft Singapore uh, staff are implored to report any allegations to the police directly rather than handling it internally. And this is to prevent any conflicts of interest. So that's, I think, a pretty direct swipe at HR that often exists to protect the company. Now... 
Amblat Singh, uh, Managing Director of, uh, I'm, 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 I've butchered this man's name, I'm sorry, um, and Partners, which is a Singaporean law firm with a solid reputation of uh, legal excellence, um, has uh, done some talking here. Victims might feel there was uh, unfairness, there was no proper investigations, and nobody took their feedback seriously. He said of company investigations that find no wrongdoing was committed. And, I mean, yeah, obviously. That's why they're being encouraged to go uh, directly to the police. So that's major. Also, I will say we did look up their website. This is their website. It's kind of humorous. Got this like little cartoon dude and the whole thing's on a scroll. So, okay. Fun's over. Time to get back to the story of bad things happening. So why is all of this happening then? Now we know what's happening. Well, Word of this investigation comes following a number of damning reports against the Singapore office and, of course, against Ubisoft in general, right? Um, you know, Kotaku called this a messy, stalled reckoning. And, uh, I mean, th there are many different quotes, as you can see here, uh, that we can go into and we probably should. Um, like, Ubisoft Singapore has always been the kind known internally to be one of the worst studios in terms of culture. People will visit from the other studios and be like, what the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is wrong here? Ubisoft apparently were soaking up the government's subsidies while not paying some local junior devs enough to make it out of their parents' homes. So again, it's just a company scummily, short-sightedly doing what it can. Uh, some said the de facto arrangement could even give Ubisoft Singapore the feeling of a colonial outpost uh, in a country with a history of uh, domination by European powers. So that's obviously not a particularly good look. Uh, many of the toxic working conditions happened under the leadership of... I'm not even going to... Listen, I can't do, I can't do proper French... Um, yeah, anyway, this guy, uh, former managing director of the studio who was responsible for overseeing its growth and how resources were deployed across various projects. The head was rotten, so the body was incapable of functioning properly. Uh, now, this person was eventually forced out of Ubisoft Singapore last fall to the relief of many people, but many were shocked to hear he would remain at the company as production intelligence director in Ubisoft's headquarters. So that's, I'm sure, great for those people to hear. Um, there was many people who felt there was a French ceiling at Ubisoft Singapore that basically meant if you didn't speak French, you know, bit, bit of tough luck. Um, and this was especially a problem for Southeast, um, Southeast Asians and also for women. So again, that's, uh, that's not good. If you are not French, you have to take their side and cover up for their mistakes, said one current developer. And funny enough, I have heard, I have heard similar from... Uh, I mean, in fact, from a, a current employee of the company who did say that they personally have had a very good experience at the company, but, uh, and this is their words, well, b basically that some of those stereotypes about French men uh, have certainly proven to be true in their estimation of being at the company, and certainly given all the stories that we've heard, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. We have a joke. There's a French multiplier, and there's a skin color multiplier, said another. So, I mean, that, that's just straight-up racism, right? The salary gap between locals and expats was just insane, one former dev said. HR would chalk it up to different levels of experience or defend it on the grounds of different costs of living. Multiple current and former developers said HR wasn't helpful when it came to the other complaints. When harassment happened, HR appeared to brush it under the rug. There's another anecdote here of HR being not helpful whenever somebody to this person just... She was walking, you know, she's walking to the elevator back to the office and somebody just unexpectedly starts rubbing her shoulders. I don't understand this clown universe where people just walk up to other people and start rubbing their shoulders. I don't know, man. What is going on? Uh, this person ended up, I actually shouted at him. St <laughs> don't touch me. Stop. And then he stopped, but he followed me all the way back to my desk and just continued to try to get my attention, she said. And I was using my phone and texting my boyfriend at the time to try and just get him to go away. But he was like, who are you texting? Who's more important than me? What? <laughs> is, is, this really the, is this really the shit that women go through all the time that, like, I guess us guys just don't end up seeing as much? 
Because what the hell, man? Th okay, that's... That just feels deeply uncomfortable. I mean, okay, I will say I've seen one or two in similar, very, very, you know, bad and embarrassing and just, ugh, instances happen in, in real life. It just... You know, you, you hear a story of like that that's at a like a gaming convention, you know, or an anime convention or something, which is some of the instances I know come from. And you're like, well, okay, I, I can understand it happening there. But it actually happening in the goddamn workplace in a big AAA studio? What? Okay, right. Moving on. Well, she first informed HR, they initially sought to excuse what had happened, blaming her body language or miscommunication because of cultural differences on the part of the offending manager. When a formal uh, review did happen, it took months, and uh, it just resulted in a good old bit of compulsory cultural sensitivity training, based on documents Kotaku saw. And during the interim, the manager was still sent to uh, Gamescom. You know, sort of like a sort of a fan and employee environment. So that is very strange. Uh, now, it says here, the training, or the quote, the training couldn't change a culture that's so ingrained with misogyny that every time someone comes out of their training, they just make fun of it and say things like, oh no, you complimented my hair, that's sexual harassment. Oh man. <laughs> In early 2018, um, Recore? Recore? I'm not even going to fuck and try, <laughs> was promoted to head of the entire studio. Uh, the developer who says he sexually harassed her resigned shortly after. I'm not going to stick around in a studio that bullies my friend into leaving and promotes the guy who did it and who makes all those creepy comments uh, to girls, she told Kotaku. According to several former developers, employee evaluations played a major role in driving a culture of fear and intimidation at the studio. So not only is it enough that there's just all of this sexual harassment and stuff going on, uh, yeah, there's also, I mean, employee evaluation, stuff like that's of course normal and has to happen, but driving a culture of fear and intimidation, if that is what your feedback process is creating, then it's not a good feedback process because that is not how you get the best results. As we go on, it turns out it's one of those situations where a supervisor tells Kotaku they can only give out a limited number of positive reviews, which forces them to uh, basically give good people largely negative feedback. That's rough. Um, now, going back to uh, Recur? Recur? I don't know. Uh, so, according to three sources, um, immediately, uh, this individual went on leave after the Gamma Sutra 2020 August article uh, came out, but no official investigation was actually launched. And according to an internal email, management said it would only investiga investigate claims brought through HR or its internal anonymous reporting tool. Now, this is a bizarre policy given everything that Ubisoft have said publicly and also that Singapore is saying, yeah, hey, screw the internal processes, just talk to the police. Uh, so this guy returned to uh, work days later, um, followed by a town hall in which he apologized if his actions had ever made anyone feel uncomfortable, but stopped short of admitting culpability for anything raised in the article, according to two sources. You know, sorry if I caused offense. Sorry if I... <laughs> I don't know. What, I'm just thinking of the, the various different things, right? You know, can you imagine somebody being, you know, sorry if I just walked up behind you, gave you a shoulder rub you did not want, and then followed you very awkwardly to your desk. No. The whole sorry if doesn't cut it. One person described a November town hall meeting to, uh, to discuss uh, the news that followed as a shit show. Um, responses were defensive. Um, and said the meeting had strict time limits and was bookended by threats about further leaks to the press. So again, this is just a really bad look. So really, it's that Gamma Sutra article that got a lot of the ball rolling here. And of course, that's whenever the Ubisoft stuff was really first blowing up. And it's just interesting stuff, you know, multiple and on sources telling uh, the press that Ubisoft's ran like a mafia, um, them creating a false culture of growth and transparency. The quest director in Gods and Monsters likes to make people cry during meetings, especially women. Uh, here's Joe Dumont and Hugo Girard, both bullies who don't care about the employees. They promote a culture of fear. Bad stuff. Um, 
Sources indicate this behavior is representative of the broader culture at Ubisoft Quebec, describing a studio dominated by internal politics, bullying, and nepotism that actively rewards those who fit the Ubisoft alpha mold. Then, of course, saying that the Quebec problems are not just Quebec. There's also issues at Singapore. And then we get to the more Singapore stuff. One person claimed they began experiencing sexual harassment almost immediately when they joined the Singapore studio, with co-workers telling them to uh, show more career line. A phrase that suggests they should show more of their body if they want a raise. Another spoke of a bro culture, derogatory talker behavior towards women, racist views being openly discussed. As an example, a huge, almost life-size diagram depicting how slaves were transported to the Americas was allegedly a mainstay in the Singapore office, despite staff members raising their objections. They were told it was a decorative piece um, that corresponded to a project at the time, but it remained in place um, for at least a year or so. It's the sort of thing there. Employees not happy with that. Ended up not being dealt with in a sensitive way internally at the company. And uh, yeah, just more about this culture, fear, and oppression. Here's a fun one for Justin Farron, who was formerly the creative director on Skull and Bones at Ubi Singapore, but has uh, moved to Wargaming. So he was called out for initially bragging on the, st on the studio floor that he only... Uh, can I say that word without being demonetized? I'll say boinks Asian girls and never dates white girls. Uh, I mean, have your preferences, dude, but maybe don't when you are the creative director. Uh, just go and brag that on the studio floor. I mean, even like if you are a scumbag, then how fucking stupid are you? And also, don't go about like a big scumbag. And especially, don't be making statements like that when people who work under you as creative director are going to fall into those categories or around those categories, right? I mean, that's insane shit. It's insane shit. So there's a, a little bit of color on the Singapore studio, the historical stuff uh, that really happened after that Gamma Sutra uh, 2020 article. And then the more recent stuff regarding Ubisoft basically, or uh, Singapore basically just saying, eh, don't trust your company, come to the police. It'd be very interesting to see if anything actually comes from this. And just to give you guys a bit of an update of the 2021 stuff, this is great. Adam prepared a timeline of events for us, which uh, I think is very useful. Yes, the Cirque de Ubisoft. <laughs> so Ubisoft sued by French Trade Union, 16th of July, 2021. All right, so that happened. Then Kotaku published an investigation into Ubisoft Singapore on the 21st of July, 2021. The Tripartite Alliance for Fair and Progressive Employment Practices receive links to incriminating uh, Ubi Singapore materials, and they begin an investigation on the 23rd of July. Then current and former employees sign an open letter of solidarity with Activision Blizzard staff calling for change. That's the 28th of July, 2021, and there is their big message. Uh, you know, a message to the Activision Blizzard workers, also to the management of Ubisoft. Then Ubisoft officially responded to that letter on the 28th of July. Uh, their CEO then did, uh, yeah, did a, a response to the open letter, which I think many thought was reiterating previous weak attempts at change. That was the 29th of July, 2021. Ubisoft staff then responded to the CEO's sidelining of their concerns, calling for a fundamental change on the 30th of July, 2021. Then, a better Ubisoft is uh, reaffirming its support and reiterating its demands as of the 11th of August, 2021. And uh, there's a few more just tweets and messaging there. And then the Tripartite Alliance for Fair and Progressive Employment Practices announces a formal investigation into all of these allegations, 17th of August, 2021. So, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough time for this fellow, uh, Eves. It's going to be a tough time for him. Uh, of course, the CEO of Ubisoft. As you can see with this timeline, you know, th this is just the last, like, month, right? This is, this is very, uh, you know, this is very, very recent stuff and you can see the trajectory that is all moving towards a bunch of ubi wide issues but then singapore specific issues where the singapore government might actually just go really hard on them and that obviously 
would be significantly challenging because like, look, if, if these get in the way, I mean, just from the Ubisoft business perspective, if all of this stuff gets in the way of Skull and Bones development by, well, just impeding development because there's a big active investigation going on by morale being low because the, the whole thing's been a shit show for years and now there's even more scrutiny. And then when it comes to actually getting staff on board, they have, you know, let's just say those blocks do happen and they can't get the foreign workers in to, to Singapore. I mean, that's bad for Skull and Bones. And you do remember the quantities of money they've already poured into Skull and Bones. So even for the likes of an Ubisoft investor, this is a rough little story. And of course, for the workers, real bad. Real, real bad. I think the only hope, though, is that with this happening at Ubisoft, and then also the same reckoning happening, well, at, at Riot, mostly a little bit in the past, but very much with Blizzard right now, the, the whole thing just spurs industry-wide change and that we don't have issues like this. Because the key thing here is, who loses out from this? Well, the staff obviously lose out. The gamers lose out. Because do you think any of this shit going on equals good games being made? No. The investors also lose out. Because issues like this and a studio that is just a continual shit show that you know produces problems like the Skull and Bones project. That is obviously not in the best interest of investors. Do you know what this is in the best interests of? The short-term protection and financial gain of executives, tenured people, and just people who are one of the boys. Those are the kind of small number of fuckers who actually benefit from all this terrible shit going on. Literally everyone else loses. So this shit ending is a good goal to strive for. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you next time.